Hi, I'm Jesse Many. I'm a senior architect here in the office of the CTO here at Solace. Uh, I'm excited to talk to you about the event portal today. Uh, why should you care about event portal though? Well, uh, because it makes designing events easier. Uh, it helps prevent chaos by introducing governance into your events. It helps you get more use out of existing events by discovering them and making them available to other people. It helps you understand how events are moving through your enterprise in ways that probably will surprise you. And it lets you share events to external partners. But you've probably already invested blood, sweat, tears, other stuff uh, in your processes and tools. Uh, things like GitHub, Jenkins, and Ansible. And you don't want to add another standalone tool. And we already know uh, not to mess with development tools like IntelliJ and Postman. And frankly, that's awesome. We have clients on a wide spectrum, uh, people who want us to do literally everything event-driven uh, through Event Portal. And then on the other side, on the left-hand side, people who want us to simply integrate in with their existing tooling and give it kind of a spicy EDA perspective and give them more power over how things move through their enterprise. So what does that look like? Uh, how, uh, what does it look like to add Event Portal to your mix? Well. Frankly, uh, there's a lot of tools out there. Uh, we couldn't do everything, so we chose to pick uh, some popular ones. You can use these plugins however you choose. Uh, they're open source. But keep in mind, Event Portal is API first, so you can pretty much integrate anything you, uh, you have. So how do these pieces fit together? I will zoom through these components. But in general, you'll want to get information into Event Portal using your tools. Use Event Portal to understand what's going on with your EDA and manage it in a better way. And then use your existing tools again, and but enhance them using Event Portal information. So we'll start by how do we get information into Event Portal? One, of, one way of getting information into Event Portal is the designer. That's a GUI where you can plan your EDA with people from all around your company uh, with purpose-built tooling. So no more cramming things into Excel or Visio or PowerPoint. Uh, but you also may have some async API files. Those could be created by uh, uh, development tooling. Or there's an increasing number of, of applications that can actually auto-generate async API files. With async API import, you can suck those in and use those as raw information. And finally, Runtime Event Manager can see events coming through brokers like Kafka and Solace and figure out related applications, their schemas, and, and how to tie those all together with events. So now you've got an initial view of your EDA, but let's say your business needs a new application. Event Portal helps you there too. As you plan out your new application, Slack and Confluence, pull in the latest information from Event Portal. Once you approve a design, it's time to start work. Rather than start from scratch though, you fire up IntelliJ, find the latest application details in Event Portal, and then generate an event-driven application. Now, once you're done coding, we enter into the CICD portion of the flow. When you change events and applications and merge them into GitHub, Event Portal makes sure that the async API is valid, the versions are correct, it forces you, whether you want to or not, to follow best practices, uh, corrects problems ahead of time, and uh, alerts reviewers for potential issues. As, pipeline, as the pipeline progresses, Event Portal keeps in lockstep the graph of an environment now includes the new application. The events and schemas are updated. The runtime queues and topics ex exist for the application. Finally, once an application is in an environment, you can automatically create a Postman collection. That lets you test an event-driven flow as easily as a REST service. <laughs>
importer. It's a CLI tool uh, that makes installation pretty easy. So we'll go ahead and install it. I should say that's because it's a command line tool, we'll run it as a command line, but it can also be used by additional tools like GitHub Actions or custom scripts. So we'll go ahead and initiate the command line here. Now we've got a report for our import here, and we'll move over into the event portal and see what we've got on the other side. We we'll refresh. The event portal organizes applications by domain, and we've specified a new new domain for this called Acme Retail Automation. We'll click into it, and the retail customer mobile application that we described using the async API is there for us to use. Clicking in, we can actually see the various different events that it uh, subscribes to. And if we dig further, we'll actually see the schema that's being used. Now let's update the async API and see that we can actually import uh, new versions of the async API if we want to. Let's say that we really want to have the product ID included in the uh, included in the async API description, uh, that helps us be able to route things based on the product. So we'll add in the product to the async API, save it, and then we'll run the importer again. So now that the importer has completed, we'll go back to Event Portal, go back to our domain and take a look at the, the application that we had to find there. You can see now that we've got a, uh, a new version that reflects our updated topic strings for our event, and we're ready to go. Who doesn't love Slack? Uh, so it makes sense to use Slack to hash out what your event-driven application will look like. The Slack plugin for Event Portal helps make it easy. Within Slack, there are many different ways to, you, to use the data stored in Event Portal. The first way is to pull in the latest designs of applications, events, and schemas using, using the slash solves command. Here we'll look for the, uh, the application that we just created and we'll pull it right into the Slack channel. No more misunderstanding about what the latest version is. It's right there in the Slack chat. You wanna dive deeper? The drop-down menu also lets you examine more information. Here we're getting the version of the, uh, the retail application. Still not enough details? You can use the deep link into portal for more information. And here you have the classic interface. And I should say that the reverse works as well. Take a, any URL, URL from Event Portal, paste it into Slack, and the information populates within the Slack channel. And I should say, you can also use animated GIFs. For example, I feel like this application design is worthy of a sparkly Nicholas Cage. There you go. <laughs> We hear a lot from people interested in, in developing event-driven applications. We also hear that it's pretty complex to get started, which usually means they default back to REST. The IntelliJ plugin for Event Portal makes developing event-driven applications easier by giving you a solid foundation to start on. First, let's browse through at the applications, events, and data schemas that are saved in Event Portal, all within IntelliJ. You're interested in a particular data format. So let's uh, open up a particular application and we can browse down. We can see that the different application versions are here. We can continue down and we can look, view the events that are published and subscribed. And finally, we, re we reach the schema. So if we actually go over to the uh, column here and we click on view schema, we'll actually get a view of the data format here and populates in uh, IntelliJ. But let's say you also are interested in the, the format of the application itself. Uh, luckily enough, we can click on View Async API. And that pulls up the Async API uh, 
which shows you the ins and the outs and the data formats of this particular application. But let's take it one step further. Uh, we can also click on generate code, which will generate us uh, a stub application uh, in Spring Cloud Stream. All the connectivity information for brokers like Kafka and Solus are there. The only thing left for us to do now is to generate the, uh, the application logic. If we click in, we can see that the POJOs have already been created. Nice. And then also in the application, uh, we've got the, the methods that we need to, to kick things off. Like I said, the only thing left here is to talk to the business and figure out what actually needs to happen. You probably use GitHub or maybe Git for service control. We all do. We use it at Solace. And frankly, after doing a merge in GitHub, you're in no mood to head off to another tool and make updates. GitHub Actions for Event Portal lets you skip that tedious manual work. Let's say you just finished up coding. You change the application interface. Maybe you add a new subscription to add some functionality. Or maybe like we're doing here, we'll add another level to the event topic. Like a good programmer, I'm updating the, the uh, subscription in the async API file. We'll make a commit over into GitHub. And we'll push our change and we'll open up a, uh, a PR. So this is gonna kick off a GitHub pipeline to make sure you didn't screw up the async API file, you didn't violate company-wide policies, and it figures out which uh, event portal objects you change. We can see that some of the checks have failed. Well, we've gotten the wrong version uh, because we've changed something. Event portal is telling us, hey, you need to up-level it to 0 0.2. So we'll save the file, push a new commit, and see if it passes this time. All right, you can see now that the checks have passed. Uh, this will then move on to whatever branch protection rules you have, including presumably a code reviewer, who will, of course, say that your code's awesome and approve the merge. So once that merge is approved, you can then head back into Event Portal, and we'll see uh, the updated objects. All right, now we are in Event Portal, and we have, can refresh here, and we'll look at the uh, the application definitions. And like we said, now we've got 0 0.2 uh, here in Event Portal. You probably use a CI CD tool like Jenkins to move code through environments. And as part of that migration, you probably make sure the application behaves well as you're moving it. But testing your application can be hard with events. The whole point of EDA is that applications don't directly interact with each other. One of the best features of the event portal is a graphical view, which uh, shows you which applications will consume your events. And likewise, it can flag potential issues like, you know that event that's really crucial for your application? Yeah, it's not in this environment yet. So we'll start here in the event portal. You can see that we've got this nice graph. Uh, this is the integration environment. And uh, we can see all the different uh, events and applications and how things relate to each other. You'll also notice that we haven't promoted our mobile application here yet. So let's go over to, actually, let's go over to Postman here. Now, typically, you uh, wouldn't be using Postman to, in, in, to invoke Jenkins. Usually, it would be something like GitHub uh, that kicks it off as part of a pipeline. But just to, to make things simple, we'll kick it off with Postman here. So we'll go ahead and kick things off here. What we really care about here is the final stage. Uh, after everything completes, we go over and call Event Portal. That keeps Event Portal in sync with uh, the actual reality on the ground in your environment. So we'll head on over to Event Portal. We'll do a handy refresh here. You can see that the customer facing mobile application has plopped right into the graph. Uh, and displays properly. Uh, it's also displaying a warning, uh, which can be really handy in terms of troubleshooting if, the, if the, the application isn't working in the new environment, it can give you a head start in figuring out why. <laughs> 
your event-driven applications need to have things like queues, topics, and subscriptions to work. It would obviously be better if you generated those things automatically, and even better still if that auto-generation auto used an open standard. That's what Ansible plugin for Event Portal does. It uses async API bindings, which are an open standard, so no weird proprietary stuff, to generate objects for a particular application. So we'll start off by checking out an async API file. You can see up here that we've got a number of different server definitions. But as we scroll down, you can also see that we have a queue binding, or rather a, a, a technology binding for Solace. Uh, there's technology bindings defined within async API, uh, for Solace, for Kafka, any number of different brokers. So we'll use this to drive our, uh, our creation process. So we'll use Postman to kick Jen Jenkins off, which we'll in turn call, call Ansible, which is a pretty common pattern. Uh, but just know that Ansible has a REST interface called Ansible Tower, so it's just a REST call. The REST call includes a path to an async API file, uh, which again contains a, a binding to either Kafka or Solace. Um, and it also tells it what environment to deploy in. So just to prove that there's no funny business going on here, we'll navigate over to the GUI. You can see that there's no, no queues right now, um, but we'll then we'll look back over at Jenkins and see we just are finishing up with Ansible Tower. And we'll move over into the GUI and see what we have here. Now we have the, the queue here. So I should say that Underneath the cover, uh, Ansible ho hosts playbooks, which you know they're sort of their their programming language, which can create underlying infrastructures for a wide variety of brokers. Um, it also hosts something called an inventory, which can map between a logical label like stores or warehouse to the actual brokers for an environment. So you can use the same async API file across multiple different environments. <laughs> There is nothing more comforting than double clicking on the Spaceman logo, loading up Postman and testing out a REST service. Now you can do the same for an event driven service. I will say that for demos and for sanity testing, being able to send the same event over and over is fantastic. All right, so let's look at the event portal here. We'll find an application that we're interested in testing. So we'll dive into uh, to a domain here, store operations. Let's say the daily store summary. Click in, and we'll see that it uh, sends out one particular event or consumes one particular event. So the utility is a command line tool. You simply specify what application you want and the domain it lives in. The utility takes that information from event portal and generates a Postman collection. So let's run the, uh, the command line here. And that is our Postman collection. And what you have is uh, a whole bunch of REST requests that are going to be created within within uh, Postman, including one that will actually uh, kick off the retail order. Post command uh, generates the topic that we want. It's all parameterized. So we can just fill in the various values that we want. To, uh, to prove things out, we'll head over to the GUI. And we'll go over to our Try Me tab, which will dis display messages that are coming across for a particular topic. We'll connect up to the to a local broker. You can see here we're hitting uh, local host. And we'll create a subscription here to the appropriate message. Click on Subscribe. And then we'll head over to Postman and send the message in. Message was successful. We got a 200 back, and then we'll head on over to event, or rather to the uh, to the GUI, and we can see that we've received a, a a message on a particular topic, and we can zoom in. We can see the sample data that came across as well. In the end, Event Portal enhances your existing tools. It lets you better exploit the power of events without making you give up the processes you know and love, or do a whole bunch of manual work. You want to learn more? You can get a free trial of Event Portal on Solace.com, or you can learn more at solace.dev.